G'day everyone, this is Luke Zeem from LukeZeem.com and I'm a HDR photographer and I've been doing it for quite a few years now. This is my website and for example this shot of the Sydney Opera House was done using Photomatics. It's one of my backgrounds for my website. So Photomatics has just released their new software, Photomatics 5.0 and I've been using it for a few weeks now and that includes my time using it with the beta. In this video I thought I'd go through some of the best new features that were released in Photomatics 5. So straight up when you open Photomatics 5 for the first time you're given this list of all the new features and you can check this box so it won't show again each time that you open the software. Here is the Photomatics Pro download page and I'll have the link below this video. If you want Photomatics Pro 5 with all the bells and whistles, this is the one you want to get, the Plus bundle, and it will have all the options within the package. So you're looking at the Apple Aperture, as well as the Photoshop plugin, and the Merge 232-bit HDR plugin for Lightroom. These can also be purchased separately down here. Also, if you actually wanted to get a discount on these products, you can use the code LukeZeme Photography to get 15% off. You can also actually get free trials to play around with and I think you'll quickly decide that this software is a must-have for your photography processing arsenal. It's pretty much my favourite HDR software so I can highly recommend it. I thought the best thing to do would be to talk about my favourite features that have been released with this new version and show them in action. So let's do that now. There are various tutorials out there on how to shoot a HDR bracket, so I won't go through it now, but this is a bracket that I shot on a Nikon D800, and it's just the 5 exposure bracket, so this would be my 0 shot, a minus 2 EV, minus 1 EV, plus 1 EV, and then my plus 2 EV. I have Photomatics Pro, which allows me to launch the Photomatics Pro directly from Lightroom. So I just select my five images, right click them, and export to Photomatics Pro. I will not go through this right now because what I want to show you is my favorite uh, new feature. It's called the Contrast Optimizer. And this is a new tone mapping method released for Photomatics 5, and it looks amazing. I've gone to this uh, feature nearly every time I've loaded up Photomatics 5 and for me it's replaced the old details enhancer method used in Photomatics 4 which, which was my favourite method for developing HDR images. The reason I like this new contrast optimizer method is because it combines a, a sort of gritty look with a very much realistic look and that's quite hard to achieve I think with HDR software and it does it really well. So to get to the new contrast optimizer method we go up to tone mapping and in the drop down method we just select contrast optimizer. We can just go to default and it puts all the settings back to their default along here on the sliders. You're also given a bunch of presets which you'll be able to go through and these are all supplied for free with Photomatics 5. So what I like to do first is press this fit button up here and that will make sure your image is as large as it can be. So using the contrast optimizer method is as simple as using these sliders over here. So starting from the top is our strength slider and this is basically how strong our HDR method will be for the contrast optimizer. Obviously to the right is a lot stronger and this is really about you finding a right sort of mix for the image. Each one is going to be different but of course you can just apply a preset you could save your own presets and use them later, which is often what I do as well. And it's kind of an intuitive process really. You just play around with each effect. After a while you start to see how they will affect each other. So in terms of these three light ones, which are the white, black and mid-tones, you'll see how they might affect the strength. So if you had the strength right down, you might like to increase the mid-tones and whites because that will look good against the strength slider. So they, they kind of counterbalance each other out. So I'm probably going to go for a kind of realistic but gritty look. We've also got saturation. And as well as your temperature. So to the right is warm and to the left is cool. So this would probably do well with the slight coolness I think. There we go. 
would like to increase the black just slightly. A little bit stronger as well. And there you have it. So that is the new contrast optimizer method. And you can see it finds the balance between looking realistic as well as gritty. So this is one of my other new favorite features in Photomatix 5, which wasn't in Photomatix 4. And it's the new powerful automatic deghosting option. Whereas before on automatic deghosting, all we did was select automatic deghosting and we allowed the software to just go through and pick out any parts of the image that were ghosted and it would just go through and remove it for you. But now we're given a little bit more control. So we're given this slider from 0 to 100 and you can see underneath it gives you a little indication of how intense the deghosting will be. So let's move it to say 80. Still very strong but 70 strong, medium, mild and very mild and none. So let's use very strong in this instance and underneath you're given your choice of which frame you would like the software to use. So it would have gone through and said okay all these buses and cars are moving here We've got people moving here and the way it does it, it would line up these buildings and use them as a reference and then anything else that seemed out of place as it layered them would be signified as a ghosted area. So we can actually select which frame we would like the software or Photomatix 5 to use in those ghosted areas and you can simply just select the one which looks the best and this is a great new feature. The thing though that you might run into problems is where you might need to use different frames in various sections of the image. So if you wanted to use the 3 second exposure over here but the 1.6 second exposure over there, this is done through selecting them with your mouse. So I'll show you how this works. Simply just going around like this. And I'll come underneath this area here, up like that, right clicking it, marking it as ghosted. I'll select the minus one EV because that was the 1.6. And then I will drag my mouse around this area, right click that, and I'll select the zero, which was the three second exposure. And let's get a preview of that. And there you can see I've used two different exposures to get rid of the ghosting in this image. So that's the new powerful automatic deghosting and of course selective deghosting which was in Photomatix 4. So now I'm just going to show you three other new little features in Photomatix 5. So we'll be looking at the new options for tripod and handheld and exposure fusion as well as the unified workspace and also looking at the fusion real estate HDR the development process. Here's a powerful new little feature. We are now given the option to tell the software whether we took it on a tripod or handheld at the same time as aligned images. Aligned images just used to mean that it was not taken on a tripod. So there might be an instance where they're a little bit out even when you took them on a tripod and so we're now given that option. Here is where you'll be able to select whether you wanted to use the new deghosting features. So if you want to use those just make sure this is ticked. This was in Photomatix 4 so your noise reduction as well as your chromatic aberration. I like to re-import the image straight back into Lightroom so it would show up here in my timeline and I also make sure that I use TIFF. 16-bit has more color and definition than an 8-bit. So this will be a bigger file than your JPEG and your TIFF 8-bit and this will be better for your image later in your workflow. So looking at the notes released by HDR Soft for Photomatix 5, the Fusion Real Estate method is intended for rendering interior with a view out of the window. It replaces Fusion Realistic method available in batch mode in version 4.2. So it's intended for where you're in an interior and looking out and you'll have quite a, a dramatic change in light between your outside and your inside and you're just given uh, limited options really for creating that kind of realistic look and let's just have a play with it to see how it works 
So our highlight depths, yep, we'll just drop those down. And you can see we're getting a quite a realistic look here, which you can see why it might be beneficial for people uh, making real estate images. And then we'll just apply that one to show you how it turns out. There's always a lot more detail in the final product as opposed to your viewing window there, especially when you're using big full frame images like I am. So these are called our finishing touches and we're given options for contrast, color and sharpening. So let's just have a look at how the sharpening works. And sharpening is probably what I would use the most. We can zoom in on this to see how our sharpening is working. And this is the Gallery of Modern Art in Brisbane, Australia. I've just shot it at sunset and we've got this beautiful orange reflection on the exterior of the gallery. So let's have a look at medium sharpness, mild sharpening and none. You can see how dramatic that is from none to strong which is a really great feature to have within your HDR software if you don't have an image sharpener. There's actually one other really cool feature that Photomatix Pro has just put in with uh, its new release and it has to do with the slider and how that will affect your preview as you're refreshing. When you open up Photomatix Pro 5 for the first time, changing these sliders like this won't actually affect your preview. It'll just affect the preview after you click and stop. But if you go up here, Photomatix Pro, select Preferences. Just when you go down to this General, when adjusting preview, refresh when slider stops moving. Just change this to continuously as slider moves. Now you see when I'm moving each slider, you can see the preview window changes with it. The reason that they haven't put it on it straight away is because it might uh, use a lot of computer memory and some of the older computers won't be able to adjust this as well. But if your computer was built within the last few years, this is a good option for you to use. It's a much nicer way to work, I think, because you can make really acute adjustments to your image. So that is the new slider refreshing preview option that has been built into Photomatix Pro 5. Be sure to change it in your preferences because it's a great little feature. So there are a few I didn't look at, the exposure fusion from a single RAW file as well as updates in batch of bracketed photos and these options here. But I just wanted to show you my favourites and there are a lot of great reasons for upgrading or purchasing Photomatix 5 as I've shown right there. Thanks for watching, I hope you got a lot out of it. It's definitely worth you guys having a look at the free trial even if you're not going to purchase. And if you do end up purchasing, use the discount code LUKESEMPHOTOGRAPHY to get 15% off. So thanks a lot and I'll see you in my next video.